Hello friends and welcome to Top of the Stack MTG. Tonight I'm going to put up two videos. Both the videos are going to be about how to prepare for the Amonkhet pre-release and how to build a deck for the Amonkhet pre-release. Uh, you really need to watch both of them, but I needed to separate the subjects because it's a lot of info to go over. Um, so let's start with how to prepare for the pre-release. I've got a bunch of notes I'm going to go through. The first thing that you can do to make a pre-release easier on yourself is to get to know the cards that are in the pre-release. Right now, there are a ton of spoilers being put up for Amonkhet. You can watch videos from almost any YouTube channel. I even made one. Uh, about the cards that are coming out and the mechanics, the new mechanics that will be in the set. And I strongly suggest that you go ahead and watch a few of those. You'll get to know the cards a little bit and you'll get to know the mechanics a little bit so that when you sit down at the table and you're under that time crunch to build your deck, you'll have a little more information. You won't need to read every card like you've never seen it before. And I know for some people, the joy of seeing that card for the first time, you don't want to ruin it with a spoiler. If that's the case, pre-release can be a little bit difficult. Just want to throw that out there, okay? If you really don't want to see any spoilers, you may not want to attend the pre-release or at least be ready to go really, really fast, just skimming things because you don't have a lot of time to put the deck together. So, get to know the cards a little bit before you get to the pre-release. Uh, second thing, make sure that you pre-register. A lot of stores will give you the opportunity to pre-register online, or you can call them and pre-register, or just show up and pre-register. If you can pre-register, you should do it, because they can and do sell out. I know that with this set, we're going into springtime, and we just came off of a very powerful set, so the power level of this set might be down a little bit. Um, but still, these events can and will sell out. So do your best to pre-register. Uh, good, so now you get to the day of. Make sure that you pack a bag, things that you want to take with you. Some things you should know about a pre-release. Number one, they're about five hours long, five to six hours. You're going to be sitting in that game shop for a long time. So be prepared for that. Number two, you don't choose the people you play cards with. The computer will choose your opponents. So if you're going with a friend, you're not going to spend any time with that friend. Know that you're going to be playing with strangers all night. Now, of course, it's possible you could get teamed up with that person, but most of the time you're going to be with people that you don't know. So keep those two things in mind while you pack a bag, okay? Make sure you bring something to drink. You can bring water or juice or whatever you like to drink, but try to make sure it has a screw-on cap and... This may not be a rule in the store that you go to, but it is in most stores. Don't put your drink on the table. Put it on the floor by your chair because you don't want to be the person that spills their Red Bull on their neighbor's cards. Okay? So make sure, make sure you bring a drink and make sure it's in a container with a screw-on cap and that you keep it down by your chair the whole time. Uh, snacks. Bring some snacks. A lot of people say try to avoid too much kind of sugary snacks because you could crash three hours in. <laughs> uh, so bring something healthy, you know, granola bars or whatever. Not that they're not packed with sugar, but you know what I mean. Um, if you like having a play mat, make sure you bring your play mat. It's totally legal and cool. Everyone else, well... Most people will have play mats that are there. Um, you can bring your own lands. And I'm going to get more into this with the deck construction video right after this one. Um, but normally your store provides the lands. 
So when you're rushing through to try to finish building your deck, then you need to jump up and run over, wait in line for a second, get up to the land box, pick out the lands that you want and bring them back, and then put all your cards in sleeves if you decide you wanted to use sleeves. If you've already pre-sleeved your own lands in the colors, the color of the sleeve that you know you're going to be using, then you can just pick from your own lands the one there's that you're going to use and then you only have to sleeve half your deck because the lands are already sleeved. So consider bringing your own lands and we'll talk more about it in the other video. Uh, dice. You want to bring some kind of counters or dice. A life counter you don't need to worry about too much because that's going to come in your pre-release pack. They're going to give you a life counter die for free. It starts at 20 and it goes in order down to one, okay? Um, you should also bring six-sided dice or some other dice if you have them because in, especially with Almond Ket, there's going to be counters that you're going to want to put on some of your cards, right? Somebody might say, I'm going to put a negative one, negative one counter on that guy of yours and then... If you have a die, you can just grab it and put it on there with a one on it so that you know that guy's not as good as he used to be. So bring some six-sided. Also, this is a weird thing. I'm going to go into some of the, the, the more nerdy things about playing Magic. Um, when you roll to see who gets to decide whether they want to play first or not, most people don't like to use the 20-sided life counter to roll because it's not as random as, say, two six-sided die would be. So if you bring those, you can roll them to see who gets to go first. So it's fun. Uh, try to bring some six-sideds if you can. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. Uh, one, Yeah, one big important thing to say about this, the pre-release is the simplest, um, least threatening of all of the events that you could go to. It's totally casual, totally fun. If you ever have a question about a card, you can feel free to call a judge. Just And they'll tell you at the store. Just raise your hand and yell, Judge! And the judge will come over and explain to you, you know, yeah, this guy has to tap before he attacks or whatever, right? It's very laid back, very fun. Good. Okay, yeah, so bring what you can. Um, also, a deck box is probably a good idea. If you have some kind of a deck box, um, Ultra Pro makes them or all kinds of companies, something that you keep your cards in, even if you bought a bundle uh, and it's just one of those that the top comes off of and you can put your cards in there and put the top on. It's a good idea. You are going to get a sort of a deck box with your pre-release kit. But the weird thing is everyone in the room is going to use that box for their cards. So the chance of getting mixed up is very high. <laughs> okay. If you bring your own deck box, you'll know that that one's yours. So consider that. Bring your own deck box. Sleeves. If you don't want to play with your cards without sleeves on them, then make sure you bring some sleeves with you. Okay? Um, as I was saying earlier, you could already have pre-sleeved lands. Just make sure you have enough empty sleeves to hold the rest of your deck so that you can sleeve up those cards. You're playing in a public place. Not everybody uses mats. People eat on those tables, they play other games, they fall asleep. I mean, who knows? Who knows, okay? So sleeves are probably a good idea in a public area like that. Uh, a playing mat's probably a good idea. Um, if you're able, maybe try to bring some sleeves. Um, try to eat before you get there. A lot of game stores do allow you to eat in the shop. Um, but it's messy. It's it's kind of hard to deal with. And there's going to be a lot of stress from the store owners themselves because they're trying to get ready for this major event. So try to eat before you go. Don't think to yourself, I'll just eat while I play because that's a mess. That's That, that can't happen, okay? Um, 
Some, a lot of people like to bring a pencil and a paper. They like to write down their life total on a piece of paper rather than use the 20-sided die in case someone accidentally bumps the table and the die roll or whatever. They like to use a pencil and a paper. So you could consider that, pencil and a paper. Uh, also, a DCI number. So to play in a Wizards of the Coast event, a magic event, you need a DCI number. The store provides it for you. It's completely free. You just have to tell, well, they're going to ask, what's your DCI number? And you'll be like, I don't know. So then they'll get you one. Okay, they'll give you a little card that has your number on it. Um, and you need to write it on your slip when you're signing up for the event. A lot of people like to put their DCI number in their cell phone. Right now, they're 10 digits. They just um, they just happen to have that many people who've signed up, so the DCI numbers have hit 10 digits. So it's the length of a phone number. So you can just put it in and call it DCI number, <laughs> uh, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's on your phone. Uh, but if you don't have one, get one from the store. If you do have one, make sure you have it with you when you go. Okay, put it in your bag. Good, so that's everything you'd probably want to consider bringing in a bag before you go. So now you're headed to the actual event, okay? Big, big important thing, make sure you get there early. Like I said before, everybody's going to be stressed. They're going to be running around. Um, if you are running late and you know you're going to be late, call the store. A lot of times, if you're like four minutes late and you let them know, it's fine. They'll, they'll be like, that's okay, just get here as quick as you can. You know. Now, if it's getting to like nine or ten minutes late, they're probably going to end up going without you. Um, and whatever they decide to do, you know, that's their own thing. I'll tell you now, just make sure you get there early, okay? Don't be late. Uh, because there's 20 other people there ready to play magic and they can't just wait for you, especially with a five-hour event. Um, good, so once you get there, you've gotten there early because you're thinking to yourself, I want to buy a play mat and I want to buy some dice and I want to buy some sleeves. Um, if you need to do all that stuff, I really recommend you get there a good half an hour early. Because probably about 10 minutes before the event's going to start, they may have to stop selling things. They may just have to say, all of that's on hold. We need to get all these people into the computer now. So if you need to buy some things in order to have fun for that night, get there really early to purchase what you need. Get there, buy all the things that you're going to need. Maybe you got your sandwich. Um because you couldn't get food until you were on the way, which is just fine because you got there early. Go in the back corner, sit down, eat your sandwich, look at your new stuff, you know, get your land sleeved up or whatever it is you're gonna do. Um, then, probably about 10 minutes later than it was supposed to happen because everybody's been running around like crazy, they're going to announce all the rules. They'll get somebody with a really loud voice to stand on a chair or something and say, Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome, have fun. Um, don't open your pre-release pack until we tell you to. We're going to hand them out now. They're going to go over all that stuff, okay? Listen up to that. It's all important. Um, some people like to talk through that, and I, it's really annoying, I think, to the owners of the shop and to the players who need to hear it. So try to listen up to that. Um, you'll get your little pre-release kit. It'll be totally awesome. Do not open it until they tell you to. Just hold on to it. Keep listening to the loud person. <laughs> um, and then they'll say, go ahead. You have... 40 minutes to build your deck or however long it is. I think it's 40 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, something like that. Uh, at that point, you can open up your box. The first thing you're going to see is your promo card, okay? Uh, and you're going to hear people murmuring all around, Planeswalker, Planeswalker, blah, 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 you know, uh, Almond Cat God, blah, 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 blah. 
and you're going to have some goofy thing that you've never seen before, and that's okay. Because remember, you didn't come here to make money. You didn't come here to beat everybody. You came here to have fun, straight up. That's all you want to do. Play with some new cards, meet some new people, have fun. Cool. So you'll you'll see your card. It'll be awesome because it's yours. It's going to be foil. It's going to have the date stamped on it, which is totally cool. A great reminder of the fun that you had. It's a rare or mythic, so you're already getting an extra rare or mythic right there. Um, it's a really cool thing, so be happy with your promo. Uh, then you're going to have six packs and your life counter die. So keep your life counter die. You'll use it later. Your six packs, you can go ahead and open them. And then I'm going to go into deck construction in the other video. So go ahead and build your deck and do it fast. Once again, you're there to have fun. Don't turn what could be a 35 minute process into a 50 minute process. Number one, because that's 10 minutes longer than you're supposed to take, which means you're wasting your opponent's time when you could be playing magic. And number two, it, it's not gonna be good for you. Just let this be as important as it is, which is not important. It's just fun. It's just for fun. So, hey, if you open, you know, four green mythics, play a green deck. That's awesome. You got four mythics. That could really work. Throw it together. But I'll get more into that. Um, good. So you got your deck all built. Then they're going to say, okay, time's up. Now, all of your pairings are up on the television or we have posted your pairings around the room. So what you need to look for at that point is the person that you're going to be playing. So they're gonna list probably your last name and first name, and then next to you, somebody else's last name and first name, and hopefully your table number. If they list your table number, just go to your table. Then you can introduce yourself to your opponent at the table. Um, Right, and you'll walk over, and Jim will be there, and he'll be trying to sleeve his cards, right, 10 minutes late, trying to eat his food at the same time, right, and that's perfectly fine. You're not Jim, let Jim be Jim. You don't have to be like Jim, uh, but it's okay that Jim is like Jim because this isn't some big competition. It's just for fun, so let him do his thing. Um, and then you guys can sit down and begin playing, introduce yourselves and all that stuff. If they don't have a table number listed, you may have to just call out that person's name and try to find them. Hopefully they have table numbers listed. Um, good, okay, so, good, you got your kit. You got it opened, you built your deck. You got it all sleeved up if you chose to use sleeves. Uh, you found your partner. You had a seat. Now, each game is three rounds. You're going to play three to four games, depending upon how busy the shop is. Okay? And each game is three rounds or little games of magic. Okay? And it's technically best out of three. So if they beat you twice in a row, you don't bother to play the third one because they already won two. doesn't matter if you win the third one because they still won more than you did. So, but probably you're going to play three games in each round. Uh, no, three rounds in each game. So if you play four games, you're going to play 12 rounds of Magic. Okay? So... The first game will be with your first partner. Your first round is 50 minutes. They're going to start the clock. This goes a lot faster than you think it does, particularly because you have to play three rounds in 50 minutes to finish that game. You got to play three times in 50 minutes to finish that game. If you guys have played any casual magic at all, you know that's fast playing, okay? And here's the craziest thing about it. Playing slow is cheating. 
So if 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 I'm playing with you and I win the first game and you win the second game and then halfway through the third game we run out of time, it's a tie. The whole thing is considered a tie. Our game is a tie. So if you start your third round and it's not looking good, I mean, you're, you're just getting hammered, you could choose to play really slow so that you can try to run the clock out of time so that it's a tie instead of you losing. But that's cheating. Make sure you do not play slow, okay? I, I, I bring this up because I don't want you to get accused of something that you're not doing, okay? I, no new player is going to slow play. The only reason someone would play slow in a new environment like this really would probably be because they don't know what's going on. And that should be okay. But the problem is some people do slow play. So then how do you tell the difference? Okay, now once again, if you ever have any trouble during this whole evening, you just call a judge. Nobody looks down on anybody for calling a judge. You're going to hear it all throughout the night. Judge, judge, people over here, judge, right? You're going to hear it all night, okay? And you can call it, right? You can be like, D does this guy come in tapped or not? I, I can't, I, I don't understand what this means. And you can just ask your opponent, right? But if your opponent knows anything about the game, they're going to, they're going to tell you. They're going to say, no, it doesn't come in tapped. It's okay. Just play it normal. And you can always call a judge. <laughs> okay? There is nothing wrong with calling a judge. Um, yeah, so if you feel like somebody's slow playing you, it's okay to say, can we pick it up a little bit? And if they keep playing slow, you know, you can call a judge. Um, but that's probably not going to happen. I don't want to get you guys paranoid. The, the point is play fast. Do not try to overthink things. Do not put so much weight on every decision you make. Just play for fun. Nobody's going to make fun of you or do anything weird. Just play. Just play for fun. You only got 50 minutes to cram those three games in. And if you're done 10 minutes early, then Jim can go smoke and you can go use the restroom. Right? There's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay? Um... Yeah, good. So you only have 50 minutes to play three rounds, so go quickly. Um, good. Best two out of three, like I was saying. So if they win the first two games, don't bother to play the third game. Uh, they, you already know who won that game. I keep saying game when I should be saying round. Sorry. Don't bother to play the third round because you already know who won the overall game. Okay. Um there's going to be a little slip of paper that they gave you, and you need to write down who won the game. As soon as you're done, if you're done 30 minutes early, go ahead and put your names on there and write down who won and take it up to the counter. Okay? Generally, the winner takes it up to the counter. This isn't a hard, fast rule. I'm only saying this because if the person who lost the match takes it up to the counter... They're the only ones that would have any reason to try to change the slip. Not that any of us would ever try to change a slip, but you know what I mean. Generally, the winner is the one who takes it up to the counter so that there's no question about, did it make it? Do they know who won? Do they understand it? You know. Um, yeah, so generally they'll take the slip up front. Um If you, if you do run out of time, let's say nobody's slow playing, you, you are both playing as fast as you can and you happen to run out of time, that can happen, then what they're going to do is they're going to give you five turns to finish. Now, what they mean by a turn is your half is one turn, their half is the second turn, your half is the third turn, theirs is the fourth, yours is the fifth. Okay, and when that fifth turn is over, 
the game is over. If there is not a clear winner, it's a tie. And that's okay, right? It's just for fun. It doesn't matter. Probably every round, if you're playing in a, in Chicago, we have a lot of people show up to these. So for us, every round has at least one table going into turns. It happens, it happens a lot. So don't feel, don't feel weird, but as always, play fast, okay? It's just for fun, play fast. Um, here's a quirky thing about magic. Uh, this is like the rolling the six-sided or who carries the slip up. Um, when you realize you have lost the game, not a round, but the game, like let's say you play and you win the first one, they win the second one, and then you're playing, you're playing, and you're really not doing well, and they win the third one. When that happens... Traditionally, what people do is they reach out their hand to shake the other person's hand and they say, good game. Um, you do not have to do this at all. I just want you to know, like if you watch any magic on um, YouTube or anything like that, any of the pro tour or anything, when it's over, they're going to put out their hand, you know, and the announcers are going to be like, oh, we extended the hand, the game's over. You know what I mean? So that's like a magic thing. So if you know you've lost the game, don't do it after every round because they'll get confused, right? They're going to think if after the first round, if you lose and you're like, oh, good game, they're going to they're gonna think you're just giving up the whole thing, right? Um, do it after the game if you decide you want to, but not after every round. Good. So that ends round one. You've turned in your slip. Jim went out and smoked. You went to the restroom. And then the loud person comes back out. They announce round two. You do the whole thing over again. Then round three, do the whole thing over again. Then round four. Now at the end of round four, you get cashed out. Okay? You get your prizes and you leave. So let's say you're done 20 minutes early again. They're going to want you to walk up to the counter with your partner. In this case, you should go together. The last round, you go together. Not, it's not just one of you saying who won. You both go together. And they're going to say, Jim, you won four, four games. So you get 47 packs. There you go. And they're going to say, hey, looks like you won zero games. So you get one pack. There you go. And that's that. And then you need to leave. Okay. Um, I kind of put it slanted that way so that I could kind of take the sting out of the fact that some people do win these. Uh, we probably won't. Okay. Uh, don't let it bother you. It's not a big deal. Once again, it's just for fun. You will get some kind of prize, which is awesome. So go up and get your prize. Even if it's just one pack, who cares? It's awesome. Um, and Jim won't get 47 packs. They may get like six packs or something. But um, but the store people are ready to go, believe me. <laughs> or they have to get ready for the next event if they're doing two in one day. So it's a great time to clean up your mess and head out of the shop. You'll, you'll be ready to go by then anyway. It's probably been a long day. Uh, so pack it up. Make sure you clean up good. Throw all your trash away, all that stuff. And, and just get out of their hair. Tell them thanks, too, for running a good event, hopefully. And don't be worried about stuff. It's going to be, I mean, I know this is a ton of stuff, but I went into a lot of detail because I don't want you to have any surprises. I just want you to be able to go relax and have fun. So I want you to know exactly what's going to happen so that you can have fun. One other thing, if for some weird reason you have to leave early, it's okay to drop. There is nothing wrong with that. Okay? It's okay to say, hey, I'm really sorry. Something weird came up. I gotta go. And they're gonna be like, so you're dropping? And you'll be like, yeah, I'm dropping. And they'll be like, okay. And that's it. It's, it's perfectly fine. Also, another weird thing. If they have an odd number of players, one person won't get to play each game. And that will be totally randomly determined, and it could be you. 
you could get what's called the buy. Okay, if you get the buy, number one, it means you won the game. So you're going to get more prizes. So that's totally cool. Number two, it means you don't get to play magic. You just have to sit and watch why everybody else plays magic. Okay, luckily you brought your snacks and your phone and your drinks and all that stuff. Um, that brings up another point. Don't play with your phone or try to go to the restroom or anything during a game. You only have 50 minutes. And all of that can be construed as slow playing. Right? Don't be sitting there. First off, it's totally illegal to look at your phone in a real competition. Now, this is totally laid back and not a real competition. But, you know, it's good practice. You know, try to be focused. Try to, try to stay on the game. Um, and don't play with your phone, no matter how long your opponent's taking. Just read through your cards, you know. Uh, good. Okay, that's all I've got. I promise. <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, Pre-releases are totally fun, and I really hope you're going to do it. Think about these things. Do your best. Have a great time. Um, if you've got comments, things I've forgotten, if you've done pre-releases -re pre in the past or other questions you might have, just put them in the comments. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And make sure to watch the second video, which I'm about to film right now. Have a great night.